demonstration, we'll be taking a look at how clouds form. I have a cloud chamber here that will help us to capture a cloud. You can actually see one developing and see the ingredients it takes to form a cloud. In this cloud chamber, I just have a thin layer of warm water. It came right from the tap. It's been heated up, but it's about room temperature, so not too cold. So you need a little bit of warm water and also something to cool the air at the top. So in the lid at the top, I have put in um, ice cubes to help cool the air as it rises through evaporation. So as this water begins to evaporate and cool as it hits the top, it'll begin to form some con condensation along the lid. This process will continue, and it looks almost like a cloud. You have a little bit of water vapor. However, it's not quite a cloud yet. There's one last thing that you need in order for a cloud to form. So to provide that final ingredient, I will light a match and drop it in. smoke from the match begins to dissipate throughout the cloud chamber, it'll form something called condensation nuclei, or something for the condensation to form onto. You can see with the smoke, too, that it's beginning to form a convection current. It's rising because it's less dense, then cooling down as it hits the lid, becoming more dense, and then sinking on the other side. That's why sometimes when you go in an airplane and you go through a cloud, you feel the turbulence. That's because of the convection currents inside of the cloud. So if I let this stand here for a certain amount of time, the cloud or the smoke will begin to thicken, and that's because, again, the condensation is forming onto the actual smoke itself. So it's not the fire that's important, it's the smoke that comes from the match that causes the cloud to form. So in order for a cloud to form, you need some warm water, water vapor, something to cool the air down to its dew point, and something for the cloud to form onto, such as dust, pollutants, or even smoke.